Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Digium Live. We are really excited to have Adam Kramer, a product manager for SwitchFox, here with us because we always know that that means something new is happening with SwitchFox. So uh, welcome, Adam. Thanks for having me, Brian. Good to be here. Good. So today we're going to talk about SwitchFox 6 and virtualization. So Adam, let's go ahead and start with 6. So I understand there was a substantial development effort that made SwitchFox 6 happen. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, Brian. So uh, the DGM team here has been hard at work uh, developing the latest version of Sw SwitchFox 6. Uh, the understanding, um, to understand really that scale of what went into this engineering effort, you really need to take a step back and look at Asterisk. So Asterisk is uh, the most widely adopted open source PBX software in the world. Um, hundreds of applications and commercial products um, have been built upon Asterisk to help empower communication. So one of those applications is SwitchBox. And SwitchBox actually has a distinct advantage in that Digium is the owners and maintainers of the Asterisk open source project. So um, not only is the open source uh, community contributing to the Asterisk project, there's also a set up a, a development team here at Digium that works um, to maintain Asterisk. So Asterisk 13 is the latest iteration of Asterisk. So, um, bringing that to market um, was a significant engineering effort uh, at Digium. Um, Asterisk 13 is is a, a revolutionary version of Asterisk. They've done some significant changes under the hood there, um, whether it's the uh, PJ SIP uh, being implemented. Um, they've also introduced Asterisk REST interface or ARI. Uh, they they've created a, a lot of efficiencies within Asterisk. And in turn, SwitchBox gets to take advantage of all those efficiencies. So the SwitchBox development effort for SwitchBox 6 was to build SwitchBox on top of Asterisk 13. Now SwitchBox 6 gets uh, gets a, a basically a, a fresh engine underneath which it can develop upon. So underneath the hood, you've got a lot of efficiencies. Uh, on the surface, we've also done a lot of work in developing SwitchBox to uh, create a, a, a large number of administrative features that can make a managing SwitchBox a lot easier, as well as uh, completely redesigning the switchboard to um, uh, introduce a new real-time engine that makes uh, real-time communications and, and live views into those communications uh, easier to manage and easier to, um, to, uh, to write uh, additional uh, inter integrations with, one of which uh, we introduced in SwitchBox 6, which is the new Salesforce integration. Okay, great. Well, that's a lot. Let's kind of... Uh piece that together. So let's start with the switchboard. So the switchboard has been kind of the flagship feature for SwitchBox for a long time. Tell us what's uh, changed there. So yeah, you'll you'll immediately notice uh, opening the new switchboard is that we've completely redesigned uh, the look and feel of the switchboard. So we used the material design language, got rid of flash, um, introduced uh, switchboard with uh, using all web sockets. Um, the, the, again, the efficiencies there, uh, you're in a publish subscribe model now, so there's a lot less chatter on the network, but for users, you know, they'll, they'll immediately see a, a much cleaner interface when, it, when it comes to layouts and widgets, widgets automatically resize and snap to a grid layouts can be saved, configured into a, a variety of different layouts for, for different use cases. So if you're a receptionist, you might see a list of all the contacts that you interact with most so that you can do, um, easy things like transfer a call, set up conference calls, um, record calls. You can dial directly from the switchboard. You can uh, initiate video chats uh, and, and uh, regular chats with, with internal uh, users. You, um, you can also uh, set up a, a, a conference, uh, a set, set of widgets for a call center. If you're a call center manager, you might be able to see uh, all, your, all the queues that you're managing, uh, what the status of those are. You can set thresholds so that you can alert uh, whenever a, a, a wait time reaches a, a certain limit. You can also see details of all the queue members that are, that are on your switchboard. Um, we've also introduced a, a couple other widgets, uh, such as like a voicemail, um, uh, visual voicemail widget, so that you can play back and see your voicemails right from the switchboard. So really trying to, to bring together as much of the real-time interactions that you'd have with your phone system and, and a new clean interface. Yeah, the visual voicemail widget is nice, not having to go to a separate page on your within SwitchBox just to get your voicemail. It's very helpful. So you mentioned also talking about um, administrative features. I know one of those is tags. Can you talk about how tags make uh, an administrator's life easy? Yeah, so the tags will, will be a piece of uh, your contacts now. So before you had 
phone books in Switchbox, and now um, you'll be using tags to, to group people together. So you maybe have a, a sales team, and you can add everyone to the sales tag as an administrator. When a new, when a new uh, salesperson starts, you can give them that sales tag. On the flip side, as a user, you've created a switchboard layout and you've created a widget and you've put all your salespeople in that widget. So now you just have to add that one tag for sales and all the people will populate. So when that administrator it creates a new user and gives them that sales tag, that user automatically shows up in your switchboard. Um, makes it very easy for an administrator to push out updates and keep everyone's uh, switchboards in sync. Um, additionally, you've also got the ability as an administrator to also create layouts for those users. So before they even start their first day and open up their switchboard the first time, you can configure a ideal sales layout and share that out to everybody in sales. So not only when they open up their switchboard, they'll see the same thing, they'll also have all the same members included thanks to tags. All right, great. So one of the really exciting things that I like is this new Salesforce integration. Tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, so if you're familiar with the old switchboard um, and the old Salesforce integration, the uh, Salesforce integration actually lived inside of the switchboard. So as a Salesforce, Salesforce user, you traditionally will work inside of Salesforce most of the time. Um, with with uh, the new integration, the, the switch, Switchbox integration is actually built into the Salesforce window. So there's an iframe within that Salesforce window that lets you see real time uh, information as calls come in. Uh, you'll get a screen pop that will that will bring you directly to the the record that matches that caller ID. Um, it'll do a lookup across both your Salesforce and your Switchbox contacts. Um, you can create a, um, a a call log basically right from the plugin. So as that call gets associated with that record, you can type notes as you're having that conversation and save those notes from the plugin, and they'll go right into the records activity history. Um, you can also go into Salesforce anywhere you see a number and click and it'll dial out for you. We've also introduced um, something we call drafts where if you're in the middle of your workflow, having conversations, you're taking notes, uh, you're not quite ready to write it all up before you wanna take your next call. Those notes, uh, those the, the notes you've been making within the Salesforce uh, plugin will be saved into a drafts tab. And at the end of the day, you can go back and see all the different notes that you've never uh, completed and go back and, and save them back to the activity history. Oh, great. All right, well, good. Switchbox 6 is really awesome and we're really excited to see what people do with it. So let's kind of switch gears now to virtualization. So why was virtualization a focus for product development for Switchbox? Sure, yeah, virtualization traditionally has been an enterprise solution. Um, back when it, it first got introduced, it was really only adopted by those very large organizations that had a lot of complex systems, the budget to, to put in and maintain a virtualization uh, infrastructure. Uh, as the years have gone on, um, it has it's been moving more and more downstream to the medium and small business market. Um, and that's where Switchbox is, is really well suited. So now that virtualization is becoming more prevalent there, um, we really wanna make sure that you know, those that, that wanna use you know, and, and take advantage of the features of Switchbox um, you know, can do so in a way that, that works best for them. So giving our, uh, our, our customers the ability to use Switchbox um, with VMware was uh, the obvious choice being that it was uh, the market leader in that space. Okay, so tell us about why, what are some of the major benefits as far as why would somebody wanna virtualize their phone system? Sure, yeah, so virtualization has a lot of inherent benefits in of itself. So uh, first and foremost, it's uh, the ability to reuse existing infrastructure for more than one purpose. So traditionally you'd buy a server and you'd put your application on that server and that's what that server was meant for. And, and it was basically purpose, it had, it's a singular purpose. So now that you uh, virtualize that server, you can actually put multiple machines or virtual machines on top of one piece of hardware. And each one of those virtual machines can have a, a purpose application, whether it's a PBX or a CRM or email. Um, and, and now uh, when you create uh, larger environments, you can actually scale um, those hardware resources across um, uh, an application. So one application might actually have access to multiple pieces of hardware. Um, and, and if that application needs more resources, um, that's where scalability starts coming into play with virtualization. Your application maybe today only needs to support 10 users, but you know, if you have a, have a booming year and you bring on a whole bunch of new users, you need to, you need to give that uh, application some more resources. So 
with virtualization, you can do that on the fly. So what, what used to be a small system can become a very large system without ever having to uninstall, reinstall, or, or do anything else. So um, <clears throat> right now, uh, you're, you're looking at um, environments where people are buying PBXs, and it's a, a piece of hardware that sits on, on your rack there. And when you get bigger, you need to go buy a new piece of hardware and migrate over. So with virtualization, it's, it's really hardware agnostic. Um, the other big benefit you get from virtualization is a lot of disaster recovery tools. So virtualization lets you take a snapshot of your system. So in a moment of time, it takes not only a, picture, a backup of, of the application itself, but the entire operating system and the virtual machine environment, what's in memory, everything. So you can quickly restore that, that snapshot on a new virtual machine. So rather than the time it takes to reinstall an application or an operating system and get everything up and then applying a backup, you can quickly just uh, create a new virtual machine and apply that snapshot and be up in minutes. Um, there's, there's even more complex solutions out there in the market uh, with VMware where you can actually do high availability where um, in real time it's actually paying attention to uh, uh, hardware resources and if an application is sitting on, on one resource resource that goes down, it can actually move that over to a different uh, app, uh, piece of hardware or resource that is available. And you, you as an end user would never know that that happened in the background. Wow. Uh, very nice. So if someone wants to migrate to virtualization today, maybe they have a Switchbox appliance and they want to move, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, hopefully you're working with a reseller that's familiar with virtualization. Um, virtualization is uh, not something that you sort of take on lightly. Um, it, it's it's more than just your PBX. You, you probably are going to use VMware for, for many other things um, for, for consolidating your, your business system. So um, if you're working with a reseller, definitely reach out to them and, and uh, have them walk you through that. But um, it, it, it is a very simple process nonetheless. Um, first, you'll need a VMware environment running vSphere 5.0 or above. Um, you'll need to be up to date on all of your subscriptions so that you can update your current PBX to Switchbox 6.1. Um, once you're up to date on 6.1, you'll want to take a backup of that of that uh, installation. Um, <clears throat> if you go to digium.com slash subs, there's a, a link in the middle called subscription wizards. Um, if you enter your reg code in there, it'll tell you everything you need to know about uh, what you need to do the update. and um, that is where you'll actually get an email generated to you with a link to download a VMware image. So we've actually packaged up Switchbox in a VMware image so that you can create a virtual machine, apply that image, and be up and running in seconds on a new um, version of Switchbox in VMware. Once you have that instance up and running, you apply your backup, and you should be back up and running. All right, well, good. Well, we're really excited about virtualization and Switchbox 6, and really excited about uh, where the product is going. So thank you very much for your time today, Adam. Absolutely, Brian. All right, great. Thank you guys for joining us today, and we'll see you on the next episode of Did You Live.